In this video, we're going to focus on relations and functions. So what is a relation? A relation is a set of pairs of input and output values. Here we have three ordered pairs in the first relation on the left. The X value is the input value. The Y value is the output value. The X values is associated with the domain of the relation. The Y values is associated with the range of the relation. So now let's focus on part A, list the domain and range of each relation. So let's start with the domain. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a list of all of the X values, and I'm going to write it in ascendant order. So first we have negative three and then zero and two. Now let's write the range of that relation. So we're going to focus on the Y values and it's already listed in ascendant order. So one, four, and five. Now let's do the same thing for the other relation. So let's write out the domain. So the lowest X value is negative two. Next is one and then three. Now let's write out the range of that relation. The lowest Y value is negative two. And then it's three, four, and seven. So that's how you can write out the domain and range of each relation. Now, how can we determine if the relation is a function? In order for the relation to be a function, every input value must have only one output value. If an input value corresponds to two or more output values, that relation is not a function. Now, let's focus on the first relation. So we have the ordered pair 2, 1. The input value is 2, the output value is 1. And then negative 3, 4. So negative 3 corresponds to 4. And then 0 corresponds to 5. So for the first relation, we can see that for every input value, there's only one output value. Now let's focus on the second relation. So we have the ordered pair 1, 3. Next is negative 2, 4. And then it's 3, negative 2. And then finally, negative 2, 7. So for the second relation, notice that negative 2 corresponds to two different output values. Now that's a problem. If you put in an input value of negative 2, should the output be 4 or 7? So whenever you have that situation, you know that relation is not a function. The first one is a function. Every input value corresponds to an output value, just one output value. So a quick way to look at a relation to see if it's, if it's not going to be a function, look for repeated x values. If you see two x values that are the same, but correspond to two different y values, then you know the relation is not a function. I want to take a minute to talk about my website video-tutor.net. It's a very simple website, not too complicated, but for those of you who want to be notified anytime I release specialized content in the form of a video, an ebook, an article, it could be a, a digital course or a podcast. If you want to be notified, uh, feel free to join the email list. And once you confirm your email, you're going to get access to a page that has all of my playlists listed on it. And this includes my final exam videos and also 
my test prep videos. So feel free to join the email list when you get a chance and let's get back to the video. Now let's move on to the next example. Draw a map and diagram of each relation shown below. So let's start with the relation on the left. We're going to map out the domain and a range. So for the domain, we have the values negative 2, 1, and 3. For the range, we have the y values negative 6, 0, and 4. Now, negative 2 corresponds to 0. 1 corresponds to 4. 3 corresponds to negative 6. So for every input value on the domain side, there's one corresponding output value on a range side. So this is a relation. I mean, this relation is a function. So the answer is yes for the first relation. Now let's move on to the second relation. So let's create a map and diagram as well. So let's start with the domain. The lowest x value is negative 2. Next we have 0. And then the last one is 3. Now looking at the y values, the lowest one is negative 1. And then it's going to be 1, 2, and 5. So negative 2 corresponds to positive 1. 0 corresponds to 5. 3 corresponds to 2. And 0 corresponds to negative 1. So just by seeing the repeat x values that we see here, we could tell that this is not going to be a function. The two x values have two different y values. And you can see 0 points to negative 1 and 5. So the second relation is not a function. Now for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a function table of the relation. And then we're going to determine if the relation is a function. So in this table, we're going to list the input values next to the output values. The input values represent the x values. The output values represent the y values. So the input values, it corresponds to dom the domain. And the output values corresponds to the range. So the lowest input value that we have is negative 3. Next is 1, and then we have another 1, and then after that is, it's 3 and 5. Now for this function table, I'm going to write the input value twice because that's what we have here. When writing out the domain and the range, for repeat values, we would write repeat values once. Now, negative 3 corresponds to 2. For the table, these numbers need to match. So I'm not going to list the output values in ascending order. Now, for this one, we could use either one. So I'm going to use 1, 2 for the next one, and then 1, 4. Now when x is 3, y is 7, and when x is 5, y is negative 4. So that's the function table. 
And because we have two identical x values that correspond to two different y values, we know that this relation is not a function. So that's it for this problem. When you have a graph, the best way to determine if the graph represents a function is to use the vertical line test. And that's what we're going to do in this problem. So any way you draw a vertical line for the first graph, notice that the line only touches the graph at one point. Therefore, this is the answer is yes, it represents a function. For the next one on the right, if we draw a vertical line, notice at this point, or place a line at that location, we have three points of intersection between the graph and the vertical line. If we can get two or more points on a vertical line, then the relation is not a function. So we're going to say no. Now, if we put the vertical line here, notice that we have five points on that line. So this relation is not a function. For the next relation, it doesn't matter where we put the graph. We will only get, I mean, it doesn't matter where we put the vertical line. We're only going to get one point. If we put it here, it's only going to touch the line once. So we can't draw a vertical line where it touches two points. Therefore, this relation represents a function. For the circle, if we put the line here, we can get two points of intersection. So we're going to say yes. I mean, no, not yes. This is no. The circle does not represent a function. It does not pass the vertical line test. It touches the line at two points. In order for it to pass the vertical line test, the graph must touch the line only at one point, as we uh, saw in these two cases. So that's how you can use the vertical line test to determine if a relation represented by a graph is a function.